in as well. Um, but my job is just to really give us that sort of overview. And so today, the overview is for Greece. And, and many of you, this is going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, because we've heard this before. We've all, we've all studied, you know, ancient Greece at some point in our history courses because it is so important. You know, what was happening among those ancient civilizations um, before about 510 BC. It was, it's culturally significant. It's critically significant. Um, we'll look at those kind of um, the archaic, the classical, the Hellenistic types of uh, periods. You're like, oh, yeah, those terms, they seem kind of familiar. Um, it really allowed those Greeks to achieve great significant culturally um, and then have a large influence on Rome, which if you were here, we kind of talked about that significance already because we were we did Rome first because we were in Italy. <laughs> now we're heading to Greece. It seems kind of backwards, but that's okay. And then those remarkable in that that just that civilization that has had just remarkable influence for centuries to come. So here's the timeline, which uh, if you were here before, you've seen the timeline. So, you know, we, we kind of try to put things, in, and as you can see, overlapping, interweaving uh, with each other. Mesopotamia, kind of starting over there, the 3500 to 2000 BC, it's sort of that historical region with that Tigris, Euphrates, uh, sort of cradle of civilization, uh, present day Iraq, uh, starting point there, uh, that great ziggurat of Ur that you see up on, on the screen. Um, end point's a little fuzzy with most of these, but you know we kind of uh, mark it there uh, as the start of sort of the old Babylonian civilization. Ancient Egypt coming in down here 3150 to 332 BC. The dynastic period starts with the unification in 3150 of Upper and Lower Egypt. And then they set the end date around 332. However, some folks carry it a little further um, with um, the uh, death of Cleopatra. You see the Great Sphinx there uh, and the pyramids. Obviously, that's what comes to mind when we all think of that. Ancient Greece then coming in between 1200 and 323, which is where we're going to focus, uh, signaling the end of the Mycenaean period, and then uh, ending with the death of Alexander the Great. Uh, Acropolis here, 5th century BC. And then ancient Rome, of course, kicking into gear uh, around 753, and then ending in 476 when uh, the uh, last emperor, Romulus Augustus, was disposed by the barbarian um, emperor, Odacer. So, and then the Colosseum, which hopefully many of you had the chance to, uh, at least did you, I don't know if you drove past, you know, sort of like a Chevy Chase European vacation, or if you got to go inside and, and actually see it, uh, dates around 70 or 80 AD. Every time I think about going in a roundabout and I can't get in the right lane, I always feel like Chevy Chase, Big Ben, wait, Big Ben, and then they just like keep going around. I don't know why, it's just like sort of stuck in my head. So just, you know, some regional context there, other ancient civilizations may have lasted longer in duration than the ancient Greece. Um, some of them larger, obviously the Romans, the largest in, in um, geographical footprint than the Greeks. Um, in ancient Egypt, we know um, the, the time period, obviously, was significant for like 3,000 years. But within a, within a kind of a short um, span of time, maybe by comparison, uh, they really differed from some of those preceding uh, civilizations. They had this kind of unique outlook, which starts to um, form with Greek civilization. It, it became humanistic, that kind of human-centered focus. They started to, to live and understand themselves alongside of their gods, alongside of that polytheistic society. That different set of concerns and priorities will therefore kind of um, uh, change their, their writings, their contributions to society, 
And it just really expands all those disciplines of human knowledge, especially between the fifth and the second centuries BC. So it's really, um, like I said, we just really see that lasting influence of those contributions. And with any luck, I'll make it through those, those slides. So um, this is important. This is where we're heading tomorrow, if you have that chance uh, to get into uh, this early portion of Greek society there. So this, um, the Bronze Age, the Minoans, paving the way for us here between 2700 and 1100 BC. Uh, it's this, you know, kind of on the Aegean Peninsula uh, edge of Greek society. The Minoan and the Mycenaean civilizations, we'll look at the Mycenaean civilization here next. Um, it, was a, it was like a Bronze Age Aegean civilization on the island of Crete. <clears throat> uh, flourishing, uh, as, as I said in those dates here, it was really one of the first advanced civilizations in Europe, um, leaving behind evidence here of just massive building accomplishments that we see, um, tools, very stunning types of artifacts, uh, a writing system, uh, and then just a massive uh, network of um, trade due to their geography, due to that sea uh, geography. It was discovered in the 20th century by an archaeologist by the name of Sir Arthur Evans. If you studied much, um, probably uh, Western civilization or ancient history in uh, college, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. If not, you're like, who's he? If that's, which is totally fine, either way. Um, the um, Minoan civilization gets its name from Minos the Minotaur, which is what Sir Arthur Evans kind of it was a very labyrinth-like um, complex of rooms, this building. It was very complicated, and so that was sort of where the name derives from, that kind of mythological King Minos, uh, and it was kind of coined by Evans. That was how he identified the site at what he defined as this palace uh, location, this sort of lab, I said sort of like confusing labyrinth. Um, but it was a very elaborate palace complex, um, as many as four stories tall in some places, which when you think about you know, four stories, we think, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Back then, it was a big deal. So just sort of thinking about that, it had elaborate plumbing. Um, it had, as you can see, uh, large fresco decorations, uh, some of them very um, you know, uh, animated and lively uh, in their decoration. Uh, and as you see here in the throne room, particularly. So it was, it was also just really like a religious and an administrative center. Uh, and so you just really start to see bits and pieces of this civilization coming into our understanding due to these excavations that we see. You know, jewelry, pottery, um, those sorts of things giving us uh, context clues. The other ancient civilization that paves the way for the Greeks is the Mycenaean civilization. Uh, this sort of um, entry gate here that you see at the citadel, and then the death mask, uh, which would have been placed over um, top, a, a kind of a hammered uh, death mask that you see. It was sort of that last phase of the Bronze Age in ancient Greece from about um, 1600 to 1100 BC. and you can see it's a much more, um, because of its mainland location, it's a much more fortified, defensive type of civilization. If you want in, you have to either be <laughs> welcomed in or you have to suffer the consequences from those who are easily defending. Uh, it, was, it was a much more easily, I mean, that way they could defend themselves. Um, but they too left evidence of kind of palatial um, uh, states, their, their urban organization that they had created, um, you know, advances in the fields of, of um, architecture, engineering, um, and military are obviously evident in what we have found um, in this civilization as well. Um, they too had extensive trade, which is sort of evident throughout the, the theme that we'll talk about here uh, today. Uh, but their um, they're kind of warriors, they're kind of defensive systems. We're really at, the, at the, the height of what we'll see. 
And I believe that's also um, one of the uh, tours, one of the excursions that you can do. So then we kind of get to the meat and potatoes of, of what we're talking about. We, we kind of get to this um, archaic period before we get to the classical period. But the, the archaic period is that kind of like slower um, period of, of advancement in Greece where we have, you know, kind of, the, if you will, the lower base of our pyramid. You know, things are advancing, we're, we're becoming, we're, we're moving out of that um, uh, Bronze Age, we're, we're moving into the advancement of society, and then we get to that classical era and after. Um, the Parthenon, the Acropolis, and the buildings, the Parthenon and the other buildings on the top of the Acropolis were built in celebration. They were built for the goddess Athena, who Athens is dedicated to, um, as a way of celebrating Athens, the city-state, and their defeat of the Persians. And so it's it, that the temple of the Parthenon was dedicated to Athena, there was this massive statue, which is now lost to us. I think it's like 100 feet tall, uh, that was in the center, which we call the cella of the temple. Um, and so it was this, just this great celebratory, celebratory um, district um, at the middle, in the middle, uh, at the tallest, second tallest point, I think it is, uh, in all of Athens. And so this kind of becomes that sort of peak, that sort of golden age. And this is when we really start to see man understanding themselves as this focus of their abilities, of their um, reasoning, their achievements. We could spend an entire lecture on the Acropolis, on, first of all, how much I love it, <laughs> how much I think that the, the math the engineering, the sculpture is just like mwah, amazing. Um, and, and if you want to, I could spend all day talking about it with you or like dinner or drinks or whatever you would like because it's just that fun. Um, but they won't let me today, like not right now. So we can do that at another point. But the achievements, the just their sheer abilities. Um, when, and then you're just like, Look at the date, 510 BC, what? It's, it's just amazing when you just start to think of the accomplishments of civilization at this point in time. It's just, but there was a downside to this. There was like heavy taxation um, of, of the city-states in order to build this, and it sort of resulted in, in resentment in people being like, this is a little too showy, a little too boastful. And it really created resentment among other city-states because they would form, they would come together in order to form a war chest to fight warring tribes. They would war amongst themselves, but they would come together in order to fight, which is what they did when they defeated the Persians. But then Athens kind of was like, hey, let's build this district. And Sparta was like, what? Why are you using all of our money, all of our funds to do this in Athens? And so it kind of became this sort of like burr in their side. And so that was kind of not great. Not a, didn't go over well. It would be sort of like 